Good morning and welcome to St James's Edlaston Church and I reckon with all the five churches I have this is probably the one that is nearest to what it would have looked like when it was built. The village of Edlaston and Wyston can trace their history back to the Doomsday Book but there wasn't a church here at that point. It wasn't till a couple of hundred years later that we know a church appeared on this site. Prior to then, if you'd wanted to get married, baptised, join the music group or the choir, go on to the PCC, would you believe it, your nearest church was Shirley and hopefully will be there in two weeks time. But this became a parish in its own right and if I invite you inside, I will tell you who the very first vicar of this church was many years ago. So in the year 1310, this became a parish church and the very first vicar has his name recorded on here, John Payne. Unlike Osmiston Church, we only have a list of names and there are over 39 names on this board of vicars who have served this benefice and this parish. But I want to really focus on one name, a gentleman called Edmund Hobhouse, 1869. He was an Oxford scholar. He wrote numerous books. He was, I understand, incredibly clever. And he went off to New Zealand where he became a bishop. When he returned, he ended up here at Edliston, Wyaston, and was their priest. But he was also the associate bishop of Lichfield. He was an amazing guy because he achieved many things with this building. It was not in a good state of repair, and so he sorted it out. Because he was a bishop, he was entitled to a curate. And I understand it's classed in the history books that the very last curate of this parish was being looked after by the bishop. But that's not actually quite true because our very own Fiona Crocker, the Reverend Fiona Crocker, was a curate here and she too did amazing things. But one of the things that the bishop did do was that he recognised that the people of this village had to walk a long way, half a mile, into Wyaston to collect their water. And so he produced the bishop's well, which is outside of this church, so they didn't have to walk so far. And every year we have a short service, the village comes together and we decorate both the well here and the well up in the other village. Before our first hymn, played by Tim, which is morning has broken, I pray the special prayer for the third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
reading today is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2, reading from the first verse. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out, take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward had tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, that the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk but you had kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. One of the difficulties at the moment with the pandemic is that last year we had to cancel many weddings and move them to this year. At the moment, we're not allowed to do weddings. And so I've got numerous brides and grooms and family members quite concerned, asking all sorts of questions about when can they get married? What will the service look like? And it is quite difficult to have to say to them, at the moment, I don't know. Please do remember them in your prayers because getting married is a wonderful and exciting occasion. And we see here Jesus going, being invited with other people to a glorious occasion. And suddenly there is a problem. We have, as we know, many problems in our world at the moment. And our faith in Jesus Christ means that we are not left alone to face problems, big problems, small problems. And certainly if the wine is going to run out at a festival, that was going to be a major problem for the people at that time. Our faith in Jesus Christ says he gets involved. We are told, we are reminded time and time again that he walks with us and he is with us. And so in these dark and difficult days where we wish we could be in church together, we wish things could go back to how they were, we are reminded that God is with us. He is the same yesterday, tomorrow and always will be. But in this passage, we see Jesus giving the command and a wonderful miracle taking place. We see the miracle of the vaccine. We see the skill and the gifts and the talents of so many people that's going to make a difference to your life and my life. And it's important that we remember to give thanks. So in this first miracle of Jesus, let us not forget that we as Christians believe that God is involved in his world today in so many small, big and incredible ways. Let us be reminded as we're in this wonderful church that has stood here for so many hundreds of years. We are part of history. We are part of something. Our name might not be on the roll of honour as it were at the back of church, but our name is in God's book because we are his children. So as we continue to go through another week, be assured of my thoughts and my prayers. May, may you have peace and a sense of purpose and I pray that you continue to keep safe. And I look forward to welcoming you, all being well, next week to Yeavely Church. May God bless you. And I ask that you bow your heads as we pray together. So as we pray, we give thanks to God for the gift of his church. We thank you for this building and all that it has meant to so many people. We pray and ask that you will help us to be a church that serves, listens and cares. And we pray that as we move forward, you will give us opportunity to demonstrate the good news 
of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks for our world and we pray for all our leaders. We especially pray for America and the new president. We pray for our prime minister and all those who are working hard to bring sense, to bring guidance. And Heavenly Father, again, we pray for all those who are working hard in hospital, for those in the police, for those who empty our bins, for those who care. We give you thanks for all key workers. Give them your strength and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our family and our friends, but we do pray for those that we miss at this time. We ask that you will keep them safe and that they will have a sense of your peace. And in a moment of silence, we offer to God those who are close to us on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are not well at this time, for those who are caring and supporting. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are due to get married this year, praying and asking that you will be in their plans and their preparations and that you will give them wisdom and guide them in the decisions that they need to make. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are coming to the end of their earthly life, for those who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Father, we ask that you will bless us this week. Be, the, be with those that we love and care about. And help us to know your presence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me and Tim here at St James's Church. Do pray that you have a good week, whatever you do, whether you can go in or have to stay at home. And I hope that you can join us next week at Yveley. But whatever you do this week, may you keep safe and know God's peace. And so the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, and all those whom you love, this day, now and always. Amen. <laughs>